people who dislike the idea of punching or being violent towards the far right should consider the threat the far right have towards others. Um, it's easy to denounce violence when you aren't a direct target of the far right, but when you're a minority or LGBT+, plus, for instance, someone who is exposing an ideology that sees your removal from their uh, society as a key part of their ideas and worldview, um, that kind of um, person being able to influence and dictate politics is terrifying. And certainly when they are on the rise, as they are in today's society, and when we have voices in government who essentially reflect or uh, represent a prototype of their ideology, um, it's extremely harmful and awful for these voices to be in societal discourse and political discourse. Um, and consequently, I find it extremely um, ignorant to essentially uh, condemn anyone who dares to stand up to fascists through the means of violence. Um, whilst, of course, violence wouldn't be the um, ideal solution, um, it's important to remember that we are at a time where just words alone can't do anything. Just a debating ideas as awful as, is fascism okay, are minorities a, a threat, is LGBT degenerate, um, de just debating these ideas does not work, because quite clearly the far right are still a presence. Um, and given how far we've already come and how close the far right are to um, gaining more and more ground, um, it's important we take direct action. Um, and thus groups like Antifa, um, movements like Antifa I should say, People who take a physical stance against fascists shouldn't be condemned, but should be celebrated. Because if we don't fight that far right now, then we have already lost, really. Because if they're already gaining ground, if they're already making the moves, then we will be at a loss for it. You can look at Nazi Germany for a good example of this. Um, many um, in the centre and the moderate right and the moderate left essentially um, saw Hitler as a bit of a joke. They invited him to their speeches to laugh at him. They saw him as just a far-right nutter who was good at telling a speech, um, and thus they disregarded him. Even when he was Chancellor, they disregarded him, and it was only sort of when it was far too late they really considered him a threat. Um, when he disbanded most of the parties, when the Nazis had complete control of the government, um, and had the um, far left been listened to, had the communist had had the communist um, been acknowledged when they're disregarding and active stance against fascism, they may not have seen the um, rise of the Nazis as we did. Um, instead, Hitler cleverly disregarded um, the left, or, um, smeared the left as uh, left fascists and left com left um, terrorists, I should say rather, um, which consequently uh, led to the Communist Party being um, scapegoated and denigrated by many in society, which obviously made it a lot easier for the far right, because the far right know and acknowledge the far left are the people who stop them. And we're seeing similar today, we're seeing Trump using um, his platform as president to equate the far left and the far right, um, which is obviously a very bad thing, because the far left are good, whereas the far right are bad, and the far right's ideas have no legitimacy. So with them, um, with the far left, who are the only people who stop the far right, being sort of disregarded and um, negatively smeared, it makes it far easier for the far right to grow, um, because quite simply, centrist um, and soft left slash soft right opinions don't really do enough at all to combat the far right. Um, but ultimately, we're seeing that the far right are able to grow because of the allowed amount of sympathy there is for their ideas and for their um, worldly. So we're seeing their talking points being adopted. So for instance, um, you can see a lot of transphobic um, rhetoric in society, and it echoes and mirrors a lot of what is said by the far right. So for instance, people um, who rail against the idea of there being a gender spectrum, or being non-binary people, and seeing them as um, degenerate, as that uh, sort of word, as thrown around a lot. That stems from a far right idea of and supremacist idea of um, LGBT being something that's untraditional and bad. Um, and when we adopt their talking points, it becomes easier for far right talking points and far right uh, arguments to seep into discourse. Um, similar thing with minorities: people who like to um, play a devil advocate for the police, people who like to um, victim blame in the times of um, police brutality, people who condemn Black Lives Matter um, and other. Um, pro so our anti police um, brutality movements people who make these arguments to try and blame crime on just the black race as a um, 
sort of platinum, a demo, I am not looking for, um, blame a black race as though they, like, collectively are the cause of crime, um, help far-right arguments, because they able, um, enable them to dehumanise um, black people and to make their ideas of white ethnic states um, and white supremacy seem more plausible and seem more um, generous. And it's dangerous, because when you adopt these talking points, you normalise and make it easier for the far right to join um, societal discourse, as we've seen already, because, I mean, look who's president, look who is influencing discourse. Um, when you have these same talking points um, circling around society and allow for um, society and politics to just adopt far-right talking points, whether they're calling themselves far-right talking points or not, um, it makes it easier for the far-right, for Nazis, for supremacists, to um, infiltrate politics, as we've already seen. And I think to disregard um, far-right as just some fringe, um, small group to the uh, extremes of society is extremely naive and dangerous, because they want you to disregard them. That's how they get into power. Your ignorance is their tool and their catalyst for further gains and eventually political power. We've already seen Donald Trump um, ban trans people from the military. He's reducing trans protections in society. He's limiting and um, cutting down on the amount of funding for um, women's rights and sorry, women's um, healthcare and stuff. He's cut down. He's trying to cut down healthcare as we speak. There's so much at stake. Um, and so much in line with what the far-right wants, it's too late and too little to not engage with the idea that the far-right are an active threat. And so coming back to the overall sort of point, um, we need to wake up to the fact that violence against the far-right is justified, because a far-right ideology is inherently justified. And if we don't fight Nazis and the far-right, we will lose in the long run. And it's all right for people who are not directly affected by the far right to say, oh, well, um, you know, you shouldn't hit people because it's not very nice. And, um, you know, uh, the far left who attack people, they're just as bad as the far right. Um, well, no, no, not only is that wrong, but that's actively harmful to those the far right threaten. If you're a um, trans person, for instance, who is targeted by the far right and is victim of a lot of hate crime already, what good is, oh, don't hit Nazis going to do for you? You're still under threat. You're still going to be targeted. And the non-violence and the allowing of far-right ideas to just be everywhere in society is an active threat. Um, and masking this as just, oh, it's free speech, isn't sort of um, the right approach, because no one is saying they can't say the ideas, but what it is being said is that there should be consequences for being far-right. And the consequence is people should be able to be violent to you, um, as you are an active threat to them. It's self-defence, in a sense. You're stopping the far right from gaining more and more ground. And, yeah, obviously it should be legal to um, at attack people at random. Of course not. It's not um, a case of um, wanting it, it law to go and hunt out people. But what is the case is that we shouldn't be condemning people who are doing the just and noble thing of attacking the far right, because the far right are an active threat to millions in the society, have already got stooges and um, proto fascists in government and are just someone who some a group that needs to be tackled and it's too much to it's too little even to say oh well it'll just play its course or to play it down because if you don't if you don't attack, address it we'll all be the losers in the long run so ultimately um violence against the far right is justified um the far right as a whole uh, needs to be combated and stopped and if we adopt their talking points and if we use their arguments and similar arguments, we only help them. So zero tolerance for the far right, zero um, apologism for the far right, zero um, condemning of far groups who tackle the far right, like Antifa, like um, other far left groups. And really, you should consider um, how right you perhaps may be, or how um, far to the right you may potentially lean, if you find yourself being more sympathetic to the far right than with their victims. Um, essentially, if you hate the far right, um, if you don't like Nazis, you take a stand now, or what good is your contribution?